problem and responsible gambling. Let's hand it over to executive director. Executive director. Thank you. And um, I, we have Roxanne Waldron from the uh, Healthcare Authority. She is the program manager for the um, state's problem state's problem gambling program. And so I've kind of invited her to speak on this topic with me today. And um, so I'm glad that she's here to help help address this. So, um, so this is before you a, a few topics regarding uh, problem and responsible gaming problem gambling and responsible gaming and um, put them all together so that we could just have a conversation. The first topic being, as I indicated earlier, the National Council of Legislators from Gambling States um, did adopt a resolution. 16 items um, were outlined and um, in this resolution and in taking a look at it, both within in this memo with the lens of what is the Washington State Gambling Commission already doing for each of these topics and or are these strategies maybe that the Gambling Commission go beyond what the mission of the Gambling Commission is doing are there strategies that were addressed um, for the as a result of the problem gambling task force you know recommendations and so as a whole out of the 16 we were able to I was able to identify um, that we're doing we're doing a pretty good job I think in addressing these matters that were outlined um, by I'll, I'll just say the legislators so with those four, though, I have since talked to um, to Roxanne, and she has pointed out that the healthcare authority is also has some um, actions that they're taking, and a few of the ones that in the four that um, that we haven't addressed. So, with that, um, unless there are any questions, I've listed in there a column of what we're currently doing to address the resolution. If you would like to just focus on the four that we are not, um, that we don't have a strategy identified for and or that we're not currently doing something, we certainly can talk about that or we can, we can approach this in any manner you wish. I can I can just talk about the four that we're not addressing at this time, and I think that Roxanne has a few um, points that sh that uh, she passed along to me. So uh, one is number seven: suggest that the states and operators coordinate gambling exclusion lists to prevent uh, people with gambling problems and others on exclusion lists from problematic play in other states. Um, so that is one item. The number nine is calls for calls for responsible gambling. Excuse me calls for responsible gaming and problem gambling policies and insurance coverage for all employees of gam, uh, gaming licensees. So, um, uh, Roxanne pointed out that insurance coverage isn't necessary in, to receive problem gambling treatment in the state. That is something that the state program is designed to take care of. And so, while we have not addressed this, nor is it obviously addressed as a strategy for the problem gambling task force, this is certainly something that is already addressed within the program that the state is funding at this time. So I didn't add a column for, you know, what is what is the state problem gambling program doing? And Roxanne, may I invite you to to a microphone? If yeah, please. If if you if you would like to speak more about um, the program, thank yeah, you. Like um, oh, what? yes. Sorry. Thank you, Director Griffin. Oh. And um, I'm Roxanne Waldron. I'm the State Problem Gambling Program Manager, and I'm within the Healthcare Authority. The programs within the Healthcare Authority. I want to thank you, Chair and Vice Chair, for allowing me to speak, and Commissioners. So, um, do you want me to speak to a couple of those items? Yeah. Then? Uh, yeah. We can just talk about the next one. Was number eleven. We'll just go through the other two and then you can yeah if you want to bounce back to the ones that you you've identified some work in that would be good um number 11 is the other one calls for development of state or jurisdictional advertising guidelines to ensure marketing is only targeted to those who are of legal age to gamble 
follow standards to not offer content themes and promotions that have special appeal to those consumers most at risk for gambling problems and to ensure that those programs um, ensure that there are programs that audit and monitor the content of third party marketing affiliates. And then lastly, number 15, which emphasizes the need to include access to anonymized player data, research components, and funding for responsible gaming and problem gambling policies to gauge trends, program efficacy, adapt to current conditions, and to expand evidence-based best practices and new prevention and treatment techniques. So uh, I will, uh, yes, let you, please speak to how the program, if the program is, if your program is, if the state program, excuse me, is working on any of those to help fill any of those gaps. Sure. Thank you. So the first one was, I think, um, seven. It's not numbered on, oh, seven, yes. Yeah. Suggests that states and operators coordinate gambling exclusion lists to prevent people with gambling problems and others on exclusion lists from problematic play in other states. I would say that, um, since we do have a statewide voluntary self-exclusion program, that is, this would be beyond the scope of anything that HCA would be looking at. So I can't really speak to that one. And I think we talked about how that might be a difficult thing to do. Right. But that would be beyond what HCA sure. would be doing. Harrison has a question about that. Yeah. So from my perspective, with regard to self-exclusion, the biggest challenge we have is that we are not coordinating with the tribes. And they have their own programs for self-exclusion, and each one of them have a little bit different, um, what do you call it? Um, they have their own programs. They have their own program right. for self-exclusion. Right. Some might, I mean, they have different time limits and everything, a lot of differences. So the challenge would be for the state to be able to coordinate with every single tribe in the state of Washington that has a program like that, that's hard to do. So, Roxanne, one of the things I was wondering is, I mean, I, I hopefully someday that'll happen, right? That's what I'm thinking. But in the meantime, I'm wondering why we couldn't talk to the card rooms about them providing their information to the tribes and I, I understand that each tribe has a different program, but when people choose to self-exclude, how about if we tell them this information will be shared with, um, with the tribes and that you agree that each individual program, that e each individual tribe has will be applicable to you. So that in a way they're giving permission for that to be shared. And I think that that, I mean, I might be naive, but it might be a good first step to creating an opportunity for that information to be shared. That's just what I So think. I'm gonna to defer to um, Gambling Commission staff and director about that. Uh, thank you. So I wanna back up for a second, just to, just to point out that the tribes have, it's my understanding, have had long standing programs we in terms of self exclusion mm -hmm. so we are just coming to this to the, we've just developed and stood up our program in 2022 while the tribes have had their individual programs for a number of years and each tribe in, within their sovereignty has set up their own ordinances and and regulations and programs obviously so we have had tribes reach out to us and, and inquire about, because I don't want to leave the impression that, you know, the tribes are not coming to us or we're not engaging the tribes at all in any capacity, just for the record. So, um, so we have had that communication. Um, and, and the challenge is, is because, as you indicated, because we have different term limits and whether people can get on or off the list and what that looks like, and um, that communication and what an ordinance or requirement for the tribal program is compared to ours, there are challenges. Now, getting to what you are proposing, Vice Chair, what I believe I heard you say is that we, the state, as anybody who would come to sign up 
for the state program right now says any tribe, I believe it uses the language out of RCW 946071 about opting in that if a tribe opts in. So we haven't had a tribe opt into the, join the state in their program. So I would have to look to our attorney to ask, if we didn't have a tribe opt in, and that is the form language that individuals are signing saying, hey, this will apply to any tribe that signs to opt in, how we can share that information with tribal entities and say they may or may not um, enforce. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not. You're not resonating. Okay. Sorry, I mean, if you could you repeat. Just, you just repeated every a lot of things that I think I just said. Okay. This is an idea. It's um, raw. Okay. Okay. So I'm throwing it out there that uh, if I had a gambling addiction and I wanted to self exclude, I would want to prevent myself from going to any casino in the state of Washington. And we do not have a way by which people can do that. They can self exclude out of card rooms, but they can't automatically self exclude out of tribal casinos. What if we had a long conversation with the tribes to float this idea to see if it made sense for card rooms to share the information they have about people who want to opt, opt out so that the tribes could be aware of who those people were. And at the same time that we give those people with gambling addictions, the ability to legally sign off on whatever the tribes individual rules and regulations are associated with their self exclusion program. It's, it's a raw idea. It's kind of turning things, making things looking at um, in a backwards way. Instead of inviting the tribes in, which we should continue to do, it's like instead suggesting we just give our information to the tribes. And like I said, I know it's a I know it's a raw idea, but I, I think that it's worth I mean if if unless there's something fatally wrong with that, I think it might be worth considering. And so Vice Chair, if I can just clarify. You're asking if you could share confidential information about those with problem gambling. I'm asking that with the addicted without an agreement. I'm asking that we work with the tribes on this raw idea, and I'm asking that the addicted gambler be asked at the time that they're signing up to self exclude to give that confidential information, to give permission to give that confidential information to the tribes. We wouldn't do that without their permission. But if you were a gambling addict and you lived in like my neck of the woods and you couldn't go to the Silver Dollar Casino, what would you do? You would drive over to Muckleshoot. And I don't think the Muckleshoots want that person there. So it kind of, and I think the addicted gamble, gambler in that moment of lucidity would probably want to self exclude from Muckleshoot as well. That's my take on it. So can we, does it make sense to talk to the tribes about this idea and then get your legal opinion as to whether or not the addicted gambler could give permission to share that information with the tribes? We can explore it. <laughs> That's all I wanna hear. <laughs> we'll report back. I oh. think I saw when you were first speaking, Senator Conway and Commissioner Lawson both raised their hands. So. Let's hear from Senator Conway. He were first. Uh, well, I'm I'm just responding. Julie has brought another issue here, and it's an important issue. And I'm I'm with uh, our our healthcare authority person here. I think we can. Uh, to me, I, my question though for her was that why Roxanne? My question for you is why would we not? I know the, the the statewide group here made this recommendation, but why would we not be having conversations with some of our neighboring states and in the case of British Columbia, uh, them, 
about the issues of this. Um, I know that, um, you know, the self-exclusion list, I, I'm, I'm not sure where Oregon even has a self-exclusion list. I'm not sure what the situation is in British Columbia either. And But I do believe that, Roxanne, we should at least understand how our our what I call partner states are doing on these issues so that we might explore more coordination with them. And I guess that's a question for you, Roxanne, more than anyone that I think the idea here of a national self exclusion list is. Very ambitious, obviously, <laughs> but I do believe that there is an opportunity here for us to explore conversations with some of our neighbors about this issue. So my response, thank you, Senator, for the question. My response is twofold. One is that HCA, uh, Div uh, Division of Behavioral Health and Recovery, we're focused on prevention, recovery, treatment. We don't administer the VEP program, the Voluntary self inclusion right. Program. On the other hand, though, as you know, um, having been a sponsor of that bill with uh, SBE, SSB 5634 that did pass, there is an advisory council that is being created and that will start meeting in the fall. And it is tasked at looking at recommendations that came out of the Problem Gambling Task Force report. And one of those recommendations was around the VEP and establishing that. So. I believe that the work that we had initially said we would do around that has been completed, but I don't see why that couldn't be a topic within that advisory council. Great, I agree. And keep in mind, our tribal partners are still part of that group as well, right? Yes, we'll be inviting um, tribal a tribal representative. Yeah. Yeah. So in essence, Julie, I'm just talking with you here as well about your idea that we do have an instrument for pursuing that perhaps the issue of, of I, I, my own sense of this too, is that possibly some of this is going on, that there are communications going on uh, on self-exclusion with the tribes. I know in my conversations with them, they always spoke that most of this is a geographic issue as well. You know, your other words, when you're excluding yourself from from gambling activities, you're going to be working with certain tribes in your immediate area on those issues. So my own sense of this is that perhaps we do not have enough information on this, on what the tribes are doing in terms of working with some of their partners in their respective communities. So thank you. Mr. Lawson. Thank you. Let me figure out how to take my hand down. Um, so I think I see several things here. Um, one is the um, recommendation number seven is not specific as to whether this, we're talking about voluntary self-exclusion or involuntary exclusion. And I note that we have voluntary self-exclusion in Washington state that will uh, exclude an individual from any uh, Washington State licensed card rooms and according to the Washington State Gambling Commission website uh, will actually even um, exclude that individual voluntarily self exclude that individual from certain uh, tribal casinos. It says participating tribal casinos. So again, this already sort of exists to a certain extent, um, but I also note that that's not exactly what the um, what the resolution says, or at least not what is in the materials here. So the resolution suggests that states and operators coordinate gambling lists amongst states. It doesn't talk about tribal operators. And so in line with what Senator Conway said earlier, I think what we need to do is look at what we're doing to coordinate with other states before we start uh, looking to our tribal partners and requiring that we all share exclusion lists amongst one another. Hey, just a point of personal privilege. I never use the word require. I just wanna make that clear for the record. Um, I, I use the words uh, explore, work with, um, examine 
I never once used the word require, and I'm not interested in requiring the tribes to do anything here. I think that it would be wonderful if we had a way to communicate more effectively so that when people self figure out that they need to self exclude and they've come to terms with the fact that they have a problem that they can do it holistically is what I'm hoping for. So for the record, I just wanted to say that. Okay, so thank you. We, we will take both of those um, into consideration. One thing that we'll have to take a look at, certainly beyond this discussion that we're having today, is uh, 946071, which is the statute authorizing the self-exclusion program for the state, does have specific limitations on what the personal information that's collected, stored, and accessed for the self-exclusion program can be used for. Um, it may only be used for the administration of the self-exclusion program and may, may not be disseminated for any purpose other than the administration of the self-exclusion program. So we will have to have further communication with um, our AEGs to see if that would need to be changed or not. But in the meantime, we certainly can be reaching out to um, British Columbia, as, as indicated, Senator, as well as um, our surrounding states, Oregon and Idaho, and and see if they even have one, et cetera, so we can start doing that research. Thank you. And, you know, next year when this committee gets rolling, uh, Senator Conway, you'll probably be walk, be involved with the committee. I don't know if you will or not. <laughs> well, I don't think. We mandated membership on that committee, so okay. I'm hoping I, I'm hoping what we do have are interested parties that Roxanne will reach out to to be engaged in this continual conversation on implementing some of the recommendations of the problem gambling task force, as well as as looking at other issues like the one we're having here today. So I just I I. Do, I uh, Roxanne has that obligation, and and I'm just hoping that that's how we pursue. But uh, Roxanne, I have all trust in you as well. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, although it's not specified in the bill that was signed into law, uh, I anticipate that the Gambling Commission would like periodic updates on how that work is going throughout the year, and then that would be an opportunity to bring forth more information as well. Okay, yes, so then we have number uh, nine. Yes, so number nine is calls for responsible gaming and problem gambling policies and insurance coverage for all employees of gaming licensees. So the responsible gaming piece, that is already in place with the VEP, the training for um, commercial gambling locations. And then the insurance piece, as uh, Director Gif Griffin, uh, Gif <laughs> um, our our state problem gambling program already is the um, payer of last resort, which means it is available and it's a low barrier program to anyone in the state, family members and or individuals who are negatively impacted by problem gambling, gambling disorder. So that is always there. And um, that's a treatment reimbursement program that is, th that is funded through the uh, business and occupation tax and the contributions from the commercial gambling, horse racing and the lottery, as you know. Uh, the other exciting thing that is happening is that HCA has already submitted to the Centers for uh, Medicare and Medicaid Services a request to add problem gambling assessment and treatment into the um, state Medicaid plan. We will likely hear about that um, sometime in early, early to mid-October. And if that is approved, and there hasn't been any pushback thus far, as I understand it, um, that we, we are working toward implementation on January 1st, 2024. So we're talking about coding and, and how we'll notify people. And so that will be very exciting because that will cover all Apple Health um, eligible clients. 
so th and then we will continue to operate the program and so that will essentially anybody who is medicaid eligible will be um, asked to go through apple health and that will sort of free up some money also in our in our state problem gambling program so uh, going back to this particular item i would say that employees are already eligible as is anyone else who is seeking services and does not have private insurance cannot afford to pay out of pocket or doesn't have adequate insurance through another means to uh, get assessment and treatment for problem gambling. You good. Any other questions? So glad to hear that the state uh, program is uh, has addressed that issue. And then um, resolution number, and then we have resolution number eleven having to deal with um, advertisement. That is certainly something that um, I don't know that that. Uh, the state program has any requirements, but that is certainly something that um, commissioners could uh, initiate rulemaking or ask staff to do agency request legislation on. Can I, could I make a comment about that one as well? And I also want to comment on number 10 quick, briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the National Council on Problem Gambling is working with Evergreen Council and other councils across the country to implement one number, the 1-800-GAMBLER, and that is in the implementation phase right now. What will happen there is if people call it theoretically, they will be transferred then to the state um, helpline, or if they don't have one in their state, they will be assisted. So um, that's in progress. That's a work in progress. It's already rolled out. It's already rolled out. It's, it's okay. It's long. already rolled out. Okay. Yeah. So, th so that, so that's that's wonderful news. That is an item that is happening. Number eleven. What I would say about that. This is the consumer protection. As I read it, consumer protection piece. And there is a consumer protection recommendation and strategies that are in the problem gambling uh, task force report. So that will be something that will be discussed by the advisory council going forward. And I think um, you are right. It might it might result in um, perhaps future rulemaking. Yes, and maybe other stuff. We'll we'll leave it to the commissioners. Yes, and then you had asked about thirteen, I think, which is recommends integrating problem gambling services and screening into other substance use disorder, mental health, and or behavioral health services to identify, reduce, and prevent problem gambling. This, um, and I know. Um, Director that you had said that uh, you had specifically. Um, commented on. Uh, training around that. So, so that's a, that will be an ongoing piece. But I would say that the integration of problem gambling screening and services is actually um, one of the big pieces of work that HCA is taking on. And as uh, as of 7 1 2023 and increasing next year, we have um, increased funding to do that work. And so I'll be speaking in the future about how we're going to be implementing additional screening uh, through a grants program. And um, and then in terms of the other services, um, I'm working very strongly with the prevention unit at HCA to integrate our services and also with um, the Evergreen Council on Problem Gambling to increase the amount of prevention messaging. And then um, in terms of how to integrate into treatment and recovery, that is, that's an ongoing conversation that's gonna, you know, be going on for years and we'll be working on that. Very good, thank you. Is that it? And then we have number 15, which we're not at, we don't collect, player data at this point, um, but I believe you indicated that one of your five-year goals was to um, track treatment. Or yes, so the way I read this, actually, number 15 seems to me to be a two-part, have two parts. One is to look at data that's coming in from um, gambling, and the other is to look at how effective is treatment? And so the looking at the gambling data, that is not something obviously HCA is going to do. And I think we talked about this, this could be a big barrier in our state. But the second part about evaluating the efficacy, that is what part of the funding, the additional funding will be doing program monitoring and evaluation going forward. So that is that we will definitely be looking at that and we will likely run future problem gambling prevalence studies to continue to identify where the um, increases are in gambling and problem. And that's potentially with those studies with 
that's historically how we have approached finding out where program treatment levels, efficacy of existing programs, trends, et cetera, rather than accessing the, the player data portions of that, because that is just historically not something that, of course, everything, I guess, we could have a rule and or a law change. So, so the, the other thing I would say is that um, in when you and I talked about this whole list, there are things that I think could be added to the what are we doing now mm -hmm. and clarified. And so um, I'm happy to work with you on that, give you, give you my feedback if it's helpful. Well, and maybe that could be something that um, we could address as part of the advisory, because I think this does go beyond just the Gambling Commission and or HDA. So, um, yeah, I think it would be something that collectively it would be interesting to address. Great. Thank you. Unless and share anything else in regards to this topic for discussion. Um, I don't think so is anyone. Thank you. Um, I, I just have one. One question um, for Roxanne, as long as she's there. Roxanne, yes. what, what is the what is the uh, game plan in terms of implementing the uh, advisory committee group here? Have you sat down and figured out when that will happen? Yes, I have two new committees that are starting up. One will be the advisory council that is um, mandated in the law that was passed, and I have been reaching out to um, representative based on the list that was in the um, law. And there are a couple spots that are not yet filled, so I'll be continuing that. My goal is to have that start meeting by October 1st. The other one is a problem gambling pre uh, prevention work group, and that's not mandated in there, but it is going to help us um, establish our ongoing uh, prevention plan, and that will eventually be entered into the fi uh, statewide five-year prevention plan. And that will also start in the fall. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and, and the, that's brings up the next topic of the memo, which is the advisory committee as outlined in in Senate bill. I'll just skip all the engrossed second substitutes in the bill 5634 piece. And from here forward, we'll just be called Senate bill. We'll just call it Senate bill for the purposes of this discussion. But it does uh, that that uh, Senate bill did establish an ongoing advisory committee to be facilitated by HCA to and this is straight from the Senate bill. Um, hold quarterly meetings, track progress on the recommendations of the task force's final report, which was out in December of 2022, provide advice, feedback on state problem gambling program as requested by HCA, and discuss emerging issues related to the problem related to problem gambling and identify possible strategies for improvement. It, we, the Gambling Commission, um, are one of many that are listed in the bill um, members. Um, to provide a, a representative, such as, um, in addition to us, lottery, horse racing, obviously HCA, travel gaming industry, a uh, gaming counselor, um, the gambling counselor certification committee, maybe the whole committee, uh, nonprofit gambling organization, the recovery community, and including one with at least lived or including one with lived experience in problem gambling and then a representative of an established business primarily engaged in the selling of food or drink for consumption on premises that offers punch board pull tabs and social card games as a commercial stimulant. So with that, just wanted to let you know that I had anticipated appointing a staff representative. I'll probably be attending either with that person or myself first meeting. And um, then as my memo indicates be happy to support back on a quarterly basis after that yearly not at all up to you um, look for guidance but at this point that was the plan that and approach that i intended to take and i don't know i'll leave the floor open to you if you'd like to share since this is your um, committee that you are leading then under the senate bill yeah i think i think you've stated it clearly and um, it, it will not be the heavy lift that the problem gambling task force was. So if there are, you know, any of the commissioners that would like to participate as well, and in addition to uh, staff, that that would be wonderful. You are very welcome. I know you have a lot on your plate, so it's not an expectation. 
but it would it would be a wonderful addition. So, I have a question about that. Yes. Um, so if we always have one staff person, would it be appropriate and appropriate what for our commissioner to come just every once in a while? Maybe they can't make it to all the meetings. Would would you it be okay if they just came to one? As long as we, there was always a staff representative, just so maybe other commissioners could go where yeah, things are going. I personally don't see a problem with that. One of the first tasks of this group, as I see it, will be I will prepare a draft charter to bring and, and we'll just be able to discuss that might be one of the items that we want to address on there. And um, you know, it will solely be up to me. I'm, I'll be the facilitator, but yeah. So is that, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. I just I I'm think sure it would be great. don't want a bunch of people just in and out of your meetings all the time. So I'm trying to figure out, but that's like, I don't know if a commissioner can always make it. I think we'll always have a staff member, but it would be nice if a commissioner could. So. Maybe just something to keep in mind. <laughs> Things start. And I would also say uh, maybe we can talk about also how we how we, a, a person from the descriptive um, or the commercial venue how to reach out for someone for that position. So, thank you. Anything else? Are there any other policymakers on the list of people who will be attending? It's not required. On there. Okay. Yeah, I think you listed most of the people that are required. I pulled it straight from the RCW. Yeah. Okay. So I use the language from the RCW. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because the RCW does not indicate policy recommendations, reports, feedback. This is just like a, an, as it's called, advisory committee um, for. A, advice and feedback as requested from HCA, tracking progress from this final report and discussing mm -hmm. emerging issues and identify possible strategies for improvement. Can we take it one step further? That's, yeah, that's up to HCA. Well, I, I, I will just, just say that my intention is to share information and move forward, so, yeah. Sure. I, I, Having helped draft this language, uh, it is an open ended situation. Uh, I know that originally there was an idea of putting to together a, a formal advisory council, and it, to, to me, that was uh, somewhat uh, not we were ahead of ourselves. This, this, this idea of this advisory committee really is trying to continue the work of the task force and to ensure that we're fulfilling the op the recommendations and i think uh, i uh, roxanne i hope that you your your attitude about it's correct you know people who are interested should come because it's a critical issue and hopefully it'll attract even some of my colleagues from the legislature as well thank you appreciate your time today thank you Is there any other Comments regarding this? Do you have anything else? No, thank you. And unless you have any other thoughts, direction. Um, is there any public comment? Nope. In the chat. Okay. I put together a little and motion madam chair i move that the gambling commission endorse the national council of legislators and gaming states responsible gaming resolution and direct staff to present this resolution to the problem gambling advisory committee which will begin meeting soon and keep these issues in the forefront of their work and then I had a little amendment to offer because we had this discussion about working with tribes on um, self-exclusion. And in number seven, and this resolution was put together by the other states in the country, most, almost all of them do not have uh tribal casinos or if they do there's not many compared to our state so they didn't include tribes in this recommendation number seven to coordinate so, uh recommendation to coordinate with other states 
I would suggest that we talk about coordinating not only with other states, but also with our tribal partners in the state of Washington. We have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Can I get um, someone to read back what the full motion is? I move that the Gambling Commission endorse the National Council of Legislators and Gaming States. That's the name of the, of the organization. Their responsible gaming resolution and direct staff to present this resolution to the Problem Gambling Advisory Committee and keep it in the forefront of their work. In addition, I advise that we not only coordinate with other states, on issues related to self-exclusion, but we also, in the context of this committee, coordinate with our tribal partners. So, uh, so I might just suggest adding one word to that at this point. And that would be that you're exploring coordinating. Yes, with your tribal partners and other states, uh, and that would be my one suggestion. As gently as we need to proceed. Okay. We have a motion. I will second it. Is there any further discussion? I could support the motion if it was one on coordinating with other states and, and separately uh, on tribes, but I think bundling it all together, I can't support the motion. I would accept a friendly amendment from you, Commissioner Lawson. I mean, uh, sure. So, um, and you know, I don't have all of the language in front of me, but the amendment would be to separate the two items. Um, so that it would be a motion to coordinate, explore coordinating with other states pursuant to the Nickel G's legis uh, legis sorry, not legislation, resolution. Um, and then I would propose there be a second um, motion made to explore coordinating with tribes on self-exclusion um, but I believe that is already happening, so I'm not sure that the second part is necessary. So what if we have this nickel G's one through um, 16 that was adopted? Can we add a number 17 that includes exploring with the tribes? So because number seven already says we'll partner with our states. So then it would just be, and that's part of right. 16. So we added number 17. That yeah, 17, yeah. 17 wasn't included in the Nickel G's resolution. So I think we need to either adopt the Nickel G's resolution in full and add our own separate resolution to coordinate with tribes or, um, or, or not, <laughs> basically. Can I reiterate? And, and, oh, excuse me, go ahead. Um, and, and I, you know, I look at it that way because I, number one, yes, I, I understand that not all states have, um, tribal gaming, but most states have some level of tribal gaming. Um, and two, I know that we are already working with our tribal partners, at least if, if the information that we are putting out on our website is, is to be believed, um, then we are already working with our tribal partners on self-exclusion um, and, and coordination of any self-exclusion lists. So to make everyone happy, I will withdraw my, um, my motion at this time. And I would like to offer a new motion with an amendment. So my new motion would be I move that the Gambling Commission endorse the National Council of, of Legislators and Gaming States Responsible Gaming Resolution 
and direct staff to present this resolution to the problem gambling advisory committee and keep it and ask them to keep it in the forefront of their work. That is my motion. And then I have an amendment. And the amendment would say that the Washington State Gambling Commission adds to the list a recommendation of their own, and that would be the recommend the language that Commissioner Lawson just provided on um, coordinating with tribes. So that's my new motion. Tribes are such a, an important partner for the state of Washington, much more so than any other state, in my opinion, in the country, based on what I've learned. It's extremely important that we mention how what this need it, how great this need is to work with them on these things. And so hopefully you all will accept that. We have a motion. Sorry, to be clear, so now there's a motion to accept the Nickel G's resolution and um, present it to, um, uh, I don't want to say the task force because I know that that's not correct. The but, advisory um, committee. The advisory committee. Um, and then is there a, with an amendment to the resolution? Because I don't see how we can go and amend the Nickel G's resolution. We can amend on our own. We can amend. We're not amending Nickel G's resolution. We are amend. We are amending what it is that we are directing staff to present to the Problem Gambling Advisory Committee, and we are amending what it is that we are asking be kept in the forefront of their work. So we're asking that they present the Nickel G's resolution to the Advisory Committee, and keep that in the forefront of their work. And then yes. we're asking staff to also. Also, what with tribes? We are asking that uh, the states coordinate gambling ex exclusion lists to prevent people with gambling problems and others on exclusion lists from problematic play with our tribal partners that we work with our tribal partners on this issue. I still see that as a as a second, I guess, a secondary recommendation, but I think I think in that regard, I can support it. I just, you know, we, we can't go back and tie tribal partners to the Nickel G's resolution because they weren't included in the Nickel G's resolution. No, but if they we weren't. want to, right? But they were want to, but if we want to direct staff to explore, including them, in, well, explore working with tribes. Okay, working they with. They can't be. They can't be included in the Nickel G's resolution because no, that was already included in the work. work. Right. Well, no, working with tribes. Right. In the work, but I think that they will be. I mean, looking at the legislation, there is a tribal representative who will be there. That's why I think so. it's really important to say that. I mean, just so that they know that we are aware of this issue and that we're supporting it and that we're hoping that they will through the years. I imagine this committee is going to be around for quite a while. We'll have these conversations with the tribes and we'll move forward in whichever way works best for all. So I That's my intent, Commissioner Lawson. Yeah. And if I might, I don't want to interrupt the discussion. No. Um, if I might suggest some things just for clarity of what I'm hearing you um, want to move forward. It, it sounds to me like there might be two motions here that you're looking to make. One would be to uh, endorse the Nickel B's resolution and ask to present it to the advisory committee. And then the second is that the Gambling Commission is also asking staff um, to uh, is also endorsing its work, all right, its current work with the tribes, 
in the important work of self exclusion and problem gambling and asking staff to also recommend that work to the advisory committee. Um, so, or something along those lines, it's sort of the two prongs, if I'm understanding. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. I think so, we get to the same think, place that way. I what do you think? A lot clean, yeah, I think it would be a lot cleaner if we had two separate resolutions. Withdrawing, so I withdraw my motion and I present the following motion for consideration. I move that the Gambling Commission, commission endorse the National Council of Legislators and Gaming States Responsible Gaming Resolution and direct staff to present this resolution to the Problem Gambling Advisory Committee and keep it to and ask them to keep it in the forefront of their work. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Mr. Lawson, would you like to make the next motion so that you know what you're comfortable with? <laughs> um, <laughs> I would like to make a motion that um, commission staff, uh, or sorry, that states that the, the commission supports the commission staff's current work with tribal partners in the area of self exclusion and supports staffs working with the advisory committee on the issue. I don't discussion. I'm uh, Commissioner Lawson, I'm interested in the advisory committee committee doing much more than what they are currently doing. So when you say the current work, I want them to be thinking outside of the box. Like for instance, like I said, I came up with this raw idea that maybe the card rooms could be sharing their self exclusion information with the tribes. I want the advisory committee to hash through that stuff. And that's not current. That's not going on currently. So I would like to see Uh, us recommend something that is is um, much more progressive than that. Well, then perhaps what we should do is is table the remainder of this discussion and put it on the next um, on the next meeting so that we can look at what's been proposed in the bill to the legislature and what the commission is already doing or the commission staff is already doing in this arena with tribes again i know that our website says that we have participating tribal gaming facilities um, with our self-exclusion program and so i guess before we go making a resolution or passing a resolution um directing just, either oh, sorry. our staff directing either our staff or um, proposing to the advisory committee that they look at a particular issue. Um, I don't want it to be duplicative of other efforts. Support of the first one, thinking of the second one. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor, Lee. And just as a point of order, I don't believe there's been a second. Right. Um, is there a second? Hearing none, I think the motion is done. <laughs> yeah, right. I have a, um, a, a, a motion to make, Madam Chair. Okay. I move that the Gambling uh, Commission direct our staff to Suggest to the Problem Gambling Advisory Committee that their work include discussions regarding the coordination of gambling exclusion lists 
to prevent people with gambling problems and others on exclusion lists from problematic play in Washington State Tribal Casinos. Okay, so you're just directing the staff to go forward and do further? Well, I'm actually, what I really want to say, yes, the Gambling Commission is asking staff to, to work with the Advisory Committee on that issue. Um, could I speak to that amendment, Madam Chair? So the state of Washington is very unique in that uh, we, we have more tribal cas casinos than any other state in the entire nation. And it requires a great deal of coordination um, and discussion and collaboration in order for us to accomplish goals that will reach the entire state of Washington. And this is a perfect example of one that just cries out for coordination. Because you can self exclude from a card room and drive down the road. And there's a great big tribal casino that if you have a gambling addiction is very tantal very tantalating that you can go into and you can't self exclude from those tribal casinos unless you go to each one individually. And I think that there's a lot of work that has to be done to try to figure out how our tribes and our state can work together to develop a comprehensive self exclusion program. And I think it's imperative upon the gambling commission to make it clear that we think that that needs to happen in the work in the years ahead of us. So that's the point of the uh, amendment. From my point of view, that's what I had. That's what my intention is. Yeah, no, I. Um, I, I am almost there with your amendment. Um, if I can just see the words on a page. Um, I would I, I, there's 1, um, uh, 1 change I would like to. Suggest, um, but I do want to go back. So, um. This has been said more than once now, so I Googled it. Um, we don't have the most tribal casinos of any state in the United States. California has more than we do, probably has actually double. They have 69 casinos and we have 35. So we're not the only state grappling with this. Um, but I think most tribes. the only, um, and those are tribal casinos. I meant, uh, I meant to say the most tribes, not the most casinos. We probably don't even have the most tribes. Um, California might actually have more okay. tribes simply because they have very many small rancherias um, that are there. I stand corrected. Second so, um, if there's someone who could read back uh, Commissioner Patterson's motion for me, um, I could probably put my finger on the one suggested change I would like to make. That possible. Commissioner Patterson has to do. I'll restate it if someone could write it down this time. <laughs> I, I, I wrote it down. I have it written down. Do you have it written I, down? I, I was trying to write very fast. <laughs> Washington State. Uh, Washington State Gambling Commission asks, will direct staff to suggest uh, to the advisory committee that their work be included. In coordination. Oh, nope, I didn't get it. Okay. No, but you, <laughs> not even close. You, got, you got me enough. Okay, because that the, the last part <laughs> right where you left off was right where I tripped up. So it should be I would suggest it be suggest to the advisory committee that they work with the work with tribal partners on coordination of self exclusion lists or explore working with tribal partners on self exclusion lists <laughs> but i think there was there was just a tick in the way it was worded before where um it it made it sound as if the advisory committee had complete jurisdiction over tribes which does not accurately reflect the relationship of the state and tribes so, there, there's my suggested amendment. Julie, did you get that down? 
I have. Sug you do? Yeah. Suggest. So, the advisory. so just, um, just one thing to note is that Senate Bill 5634 forms this advisory committee, and, I, and I'll just reiterate. Go ahead. What the advisory committee's responsibilities are, and that is to track progress on the recommendations of the task force, final report, provide advice and feedback on the state gambling program as requested by HCA, and to discuss emerging issues related to problem gambling and identify so they can discuss it. So are you asking the are you asking that the advisory committee also get to a point of what is the I'll language? listen to the motion. I, I guess yes. I, I guess I need to listen to the motion again. We have we have the first part of the motion that we've agreed to. What is the second part now? You suggest um, to work with the advisory committee. You suggest to the advisory to the advisory committee that they work um, with the tribal partners in coordination of the self exclusion list. I think that's great. <laughs> that's not what it was. Oh no. no. I'm not I'm not sorry, going She's back. I'm I'm okay. not even sure uh, it's necessary though. Like I'm looking at the legislation. So section six two says individuals and families impacted by problem gambling will benefit from the availability of a uniform self exclusion program. And then if you look at sub B. Does the program must have a process for federally recognized Indian tribes or tribal enterprises that own gambling operations to voluntarily participate in the self exclusion program? So it's already in the legislation that's been proposed. So are you withdrawing your amendment? Motion? Uh, yes. Not sure that it's necessary because I see it already yeah. in the legislation. I, I, I'll <laughs> offer that amendment then, as it stands. I'll offer it up. Would it make more sense, maybe, from what Executive Director Griffin was saying, to have this be done within the Gambling Commission? But I guess explore it, and we can potentially make a motion later. Of working with tribes, but not to have it related to this um, committee at all. What that? <laughs> I mean, this, so I can I would be happy to provide details of of the of the number of times that we have addressed this with tribes. This is an ongoing invitation, and the RCW says, you know. That this is voluntarily participation in the self exclusion program. So, I I will need more direction as to how you want. So I can provide a summary of what we've done so far, and then I would be what I, what I will need to make sure that I'm complying and that we're adequately addressing what your requests are is what that will look like beyond what we've done already in context with the RCW. Okay. I think Commissioner Patterson kind of just wants to look at so far the part about card rooms being disseminated to to tribes, right? People that are on that self-exclusion list, and then I'm kind of um, tired now and frustrated a little bit. So we can we can certainly address that. <laughs> we can get back to you on that piece, but it was taking a more global approach. As I don't know what your point was about the voluntary thing. What is that about? That the tribes can. So what the RCW currently says is a state self exclusion program must have a process for federally recognized Indian tribes or tribal enterprises that own gambling operations or facilities with Class Three gaming compacts to voluntarily. Participate in the self exclusion program. Well, that, uh, what, why is that relevant to this conversation? Because what I thought I was hearing was that there was that we, that staff was in one of these many motions that staff was being directed to engage, and 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 what I think potentially was lost is that we have engaged. We yeah. have over the years sought to 
engaged with the tribes to voluntarily participate in the self exclusion program. Have we looked at your suggestion about just saying uh, changing the form? No, we have not addressed that. Okay. We can certainly do that. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated right now and. Um, I just see that there's a big um, job ahead of us with regard to self exclusion. Mm -hmm. And it, and it is going to require um, this advisory committee to have some very interesting and dynamic conversations with the tribes about how we can make it possible for people with gambling addictions to self exclude across the entire state of Washington because they will want to do that. And I think that the tribes will want that to happen as well. And this isn't going to be easy figure out how to do that. I mean, it's going to be just as difficult as coordinating with every other state in the country to do this. In this state, because of the number of tribes we have, it's going to be just as difficult, in my opinion, because that each one has a different way of doing this. And so that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say that the Gambling Commission should highlight the fact that we need to, to emphasize the need to do this work. And so it doesn't look like we're all on the same page with that. And I don't want to stay any longer here. And I'm and maybe we'll have a conversation about this again, I hope. Maybe we could think about the best way to have a conversation about this, because I sense that we're really wrapped around the axle right now. So I'll I'll withdraw my motion. But I do want to say that it's very, if I if you give me a moment, Madam Chair, it's very difficult for me, Commissioner Lawson, to constantly feel like you, that there's a sense that I am somehow or other impugning the tribes when I suggest that we do this work, this work or any work with the tribes, or that if we question the tribes on anything that all of a sudden we're not recognizing their sovereignty or we're not playing nicely with them. We are partners with them. And so that's very frustrating for me. And I understand, you know, there's a lot of history. I do understand that. Anyway, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, okay, any other thoughts or comments on tab eight? Are there any public comments? No. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to come? Uh, yes, yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for the opportunity to respond or give public feedback. Um, in my in my position as a manager of the state problem gambling program, and I will likely be the facilitator for that advisory council. I just want to say that, um, first of all, my understanding and reading of the RCW uh, um, and the language that applies to the advisory council is that, as you as you said, director, we're going to be um, looking at those resolutions that we work so hard on, see how they're going. We're going to um, tr talk about any emerging issues that are coming up, and I think there was one other other item on there. Um, I don't see in there anywhere that we can make people on that advisory council do anything. There's nothing that's required that we have any power to do. So um, I really resonated, um, Commissioner Patterson, with, with the Gambling Commission endorsing the resolutions of the Nickel G resolution and then um, sharing that through staff with the advisory council. And then if there's an additional piece around, you know, does the advisory council, would, would the gambling commission like the advisory council through the staff uh, or members to talk about brainstorming about how this might be, um, that other issue around the, the voluntary self-exclusion program and how it works with the tribes. I can see that being a role that could happen in the advisory council. I just don't, I, the advisory council is, is not a make things happen as I view it kind of council. It's more of a, if there are members on the council, and there will be like Evergreen Council and, and others that are already doing this work, um, commission staff, possibly um, commissioners, 
and they want to take that away and then continue to do that work, I think that's great and that would be my hope, but I don't feel like HCA is in a role as the um, convener of this group to actually be able to um, make it a piece of work that the advisory council is doing itself. Does that, does that make sense? No, you're absolutely right. Okay. But, but the policymakers here, the gambling commission could make a recommendation to you. We can't force you, we can't direct you, we can't force the tribes, we can't direct the tribes, but we can have an opinion about what it is that you should probably be doing. And that's what I was trying to do here. Yeah. Because we are policymakers. Thank you. You bet. Thank you.